Hello, hello, possums. Yes, it is I, the conspicuous moo. And uh, today we're talking about ESO Plus. Now, ESO Plus is the subscription service for Elder Scrolls Online. It's not compulsory, but it does come with a lot of perks. However, if you decide that you don't want to use ESO Plus, then you are going to have to make a few changes in the way that you do things in the game, just to make sure that you can keep on top of everything. And that's what I'm here to help you with today. Just a few handy tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way as I've, you know, basically not subscribed to ESO currently. So with that in mind, let us get cracking. Uh, the first things that you're going to need to know are about ESO Plus is that there are going to be two major losses that you are going to incur as a result of not being subscribed. They are um, bag and storage space um, and a DLCs or downloadable content. So we're going to go um, over these two main ones today um, and just sort of give you an idea of how you can handle a life without the subscription service. So we're going to start with the um, bag and storage space. Now, no ESO Plus uh, means no bottomless craft bag. A craft bag is one of the main reasons a lot of people stay subscribed to ESO um, because it's basically all of your reagents, everything you use to craft just goes into a bag that has unlimited space, um, doesn't take up any of your personal bag space, um, and is generally all round awesome and brilliant. Um, you're not going to have that if you don't have ESO+. Plus. So, but you know, that's not the end of the world, you can definitely get around it. Now when you do start a new character, for example, you will start automatically with 60 bag slots and 60 bank slots. Now both of these things are upgradable from, from different areas. There's a pack merchant and you can upgrade the bags and the, the bank itself will, will sell you additional slots as well. Now it does cost quite a bit of gold in order to actually max these out, but uh, you can at least make a start and have a general idea of how much it's going to cost. All in all, if you max out um, the bag and the bank slots this way, it's just under a million gold of in-game currency, which seems like a lot, but it isn't really. Now, when it comes to personal bank space, you do have some additional options as well. Um, if you go to the Stable Master, you are able to upgrade your mount um, once every 20 hours. It costs 250 gold, and you have a choice between speed, stamina, and storage. So if you want the additional 60 slots there, um, definitely worth working towards. Most people will take speed, then stamina, then storage last, but you know, it depends on your circumstances. Uh, just bear in mind that if you do max out the, the bag space first, you're probably better off running around on the ground, the mount a bit on the slow side. So if you do manage that, you're up to now 200 personal bag slot, which, you know, is pretty good. Um, now you can get an additional 10 um, by investing in the two upgrades on the crown store. Um, there's a nice little piggy and there's a nice little ratty. Um, both of those have five additional slots. You don't have to have them out in order for them to count. Um, and that will give you a grand total of 210 slots. Which isn't too bad, really. I mean, when you when you think about it, it's, it's going to take you a while to fill up those bags, or so you'd think. Right, on to the banking. So once you've invested a little over three quarters of a million gold into maxing it out to 240 slots, um, you will probably need more. I mean, you don't think you will, but you definitely will. Took that one from J. Allen Brack. So what can you do to improve your storage space? Storage boxes is your answer. So storage boxes are items that you can place within your housing. Um, which will increase your storage space. Now, there's two types, there's a 30 slot and a 60 slot, um, and it can be placed in any of your housing, but you know, the housing itself isn't really a problem because in most major cities in ESO, you will get a quest to get a free in-room, and you can just fill it with storage boxes if you want. Um, so, you know, that part of it's quite easy. Acquiring these boxes is not so much. So, obviously, the Crown Store sells these boxes um, and I do not recommend that you go to that trouble because you're supposed to be saving money from not having a sub so so going and spending crowns <laughs> on these boxes is illogical um, but there is another way there is always another way um, but it does require that you you're going to need to max out your crafting professions in order for this to happen now if you are a maxed out crafter and you have been doing your dailies then every once in a while you'll be fortunate enough to get a master it and the master it's um, have writ vouchers as rewards. Uh, basically, you craft a, a far more elaborate piece of gear, um, you give it to this chap and he will give you some tickets in return for the work. Um, now, the chap I go to is the Mastercraft mediator by the name of Arulus Hlalu in Elden Root. He's, he's rather snooty and bad-tempered, but, you know, he, he definitely does pay you, you know, what you're due. Don't forget to say hello to Travels as well. Now, as you can see, um, there are four boxes available um, with the 60 slots, um, and they will cost 200 writ vouchers each. 
um, and then you've got three of the 30 slotters as well. So, you know, it's 1100 writ vouchers and all to get all of them um, without having to go through the, the crown store in order to get them. But, you know, if you wanted additional bank options, uh, there they are. So that all sounds pretty good, but it is a lot of yardage, you know, that's going to be a lot of work. Crafting that many master writs is going to take you some time. You're going to need max crafting in order to do it. Um, so may, it's possible that the storage box thing is not going to be an option, but I'm leaving it out there for you. Now, there are a couple of other things that I, I feel I should point out at this point. Um, and if you are crafting anything, um, if it's in your bank, you'll be able to access it and then just craft it. If it's in your storage boxes, you're gonna to have to pull them out of the storage boxes in, a, in order to craft it, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't do the same thing as the bank. So that's just another thing to, to bear in mind. At the moment, I'm using my very, very few storage boxes for just that miscellaneous stuff that you pick up, you know, different gear sets you're not using, all of the costumes and master it's ironically. Um, as well so you know that's that's what i'm using the storage boxes for and the bank has got all the sort of more material stuff in it now there's one last important thing that we need to do before we leave these this storage area and that is turn off auto loot um you do not want this on <laughs> if you do not have a bottomless craft bag because you'll be picking up all sorts of rubbish like ginseng um that you probably won't use um and we'll just it'll clutter up your bags and clutter up your bank and you, you just don't need that you know you need to to keep a fairly tight rein on what you're picking up these days Right, so now that you've got your massive bags and your even more massive bank space, we need to move on to the DLCs, the downloadable content. Now, um, you, if you pull up a map, it'll look something like this. Got a lot of black spaces on it. That's basically places you can't go anymore because you don't own the DLCs. Part of the ESO Plus perks thing is that you get access to all of the DLCs bar the most recent one. Now, of course, the way around this is to actually buy the DLCs, but you're not really in the market to be spending real money right now, so what on earth do you do? Because it's not as if you have any crowns to spend. That 1650 you're picking up from your subscription are no longer there. So, what do? One of the new innovations, and uh, this isn't strictly DLC, but it is very useful, um, is called Endeavours, and it, it came in in Blackwood, and basically uh, it has a list of daily things you can do and a, and a list of weekly things you can do, and you earn seals of endeavor and you can then go and spend those at the crown store on items inside the crown crates unfortunately at this time seals of endeavor cannot be used on dlcs but if you do want to pick up things then you know that it will cost you an awful lot of seals in some places especially the mounts but it's not all about the mounts you know there's a lot of handy stuff that come in these crown crates which are essentially let's be honest loot boxes so for example you know take these skins and um the companions here i mean they're about a thousand seals of endeavor each um you get 45 a day from from doing the daily ones which it takes almost no time at all and most of the time you'll just be wandering around and so doing your thing and you'll just like achieve them um, and you, I think you get about 250 from the weeklies. So it is going to take some time, but you know, ultimately you're going to be getting free stuff that you can pick straight out of the crown crates without going for the whole randomized loot box thing. So, you know, it is pretty good. And um, it's also worth pointing out um, for, for those of you who are reading the storage thing earlier that you can also buy riding upgrades um, as well with these seals. I think at 260 seals, 360. Um, and uh, so yeah, if you want to accelerate that process, then uh, that's another way of doing it. None of this, of course, solves your DLC problem. Um, now this is a little more complex um, and it does involve a little risk if you go to the wrong places, but you know, ultimately, if you want to be purchasing DLCs, this is the only legitimate way to do it without spending real money. So what we're talking about here is crown trading. Um, now this is basically a system whereby you, have a lot of in-game gold. You wish to get a DLC. It costs three and a half thousand crowns. So you pay an exchange rate of gold to, cr to crowns. You agree on that. You pay the gold and then they will gift you the expansion from the reserves of crowns that they're not using. So, you know, it's basically an exchange of in-game gold for the crowns that they've got. Now, ZeniMax Online, who are the creators of ESO, have a very clear policy on this indeed. Trading in-game items in this way is absolutely fine. Trading anything out of game, like real life money, for any of these products is absolutely not fine. So, and unfortunately, you know, if you do get stiffed in a deal, um, Zenimax are not going to bother interfering in that transaction because, you know, it's not a transaction they actually support. 
So the real risk involved in the system is, you know, who are you actually doing deals with? Um, but, you know, you can mitigate an awful lot of that by going through the correct channels. Now, the first thing you will need to be aware of is the current exchange rate for your server. Prices do vary um, from server to server and from time to time. Because Blackwood has been out for very long at the moment, it is definitely not a buyer's market. Um, at the moment, you know, you will be very much pay paying over the odds for your crowns, but, you know, that's a decision you'll have to take. Now, the best way to do this crown trading, um, in my humble opinion, is not going into zone chat and hoping the person you're talking to is legit, because that sounds a little risky, um, but actually going through one of the Discord crown trading organizations, of which there are many. Um, now, these are discords that have been specifically set up by individuals. Um, they have a whole bunch of crown sellers on one side, and then they have you on the other side, and they broker the arrangement themselves. So if you're going to get into this, you need to be aware of the current exchange rate. Um, this may differ on different Discord trading platforms. Um, the one I use, um, and I've been using for years without any issues, is Tamriel Crown Exchange. Um, and, and their current rate, I think, is 650 to 1. So in other words, 650 gold per crown. That's the exchange rate. So, um, you know, if you wanted an item that cost a thousand crowns, it will cost you six hundred and fifty thousand in-game gold. So these multiple Discord sites are um, highly recommended, and they're they're very well reputed as well. Um, and they're just matching people with too many crowns with people with too much gold. And uh, the PCEU have their own version, I think, and called Crown Network. And then there's other ones called World Exchange Black Market, Crown Black Market something like that um, and you know I personally can't vouch for any of them bar Tamriel Crown Exchange because that's where I go um, but you know it does have an entire you know, set of absolutely trusted sellers who've been doing this for a long time and they have brokers for the sellers who are newer um, and when you make your order it's completely confidential and you know it's it's good you know you don't have any like visibility to everybody else about what you're buying etc and you can leave feedback you're actually encouraged to do that now it is of course daunting going into these servers for the very very first time but you know once you've successfully purchased your first thing um, you'll have a rhythm for it and you'll be able to do it on a more regular basis um, you know i've purchased outfits um, lots of crown crates uh, the riding upgrades uh, i got i i sped my horsey up to 60 um super quick um and yes quite a few dlcs i got somerset uh, a few weeks ago and a priest outfit one of the bosman priest outfits is a very drab um and that was 3.15 million gold i think it was something like that the exchange rate was rather high um but i've got no complaints and the, the transaction was absolutely fine now I will link an excellent article from ESO University on this topic. Um, it does cover the basics quite nicely, um, including Zenimax's official stance and uh, some of the exchange services as well. So um, you know, if you're if you're into this sort of thing, you're interested in it, then that's probably a very good place to start. Okay, so I know that was a lot to take in all one hit, and I will break this up into chapters because it's going on for quite a while. Um, so. Uh, but, you know, I, I just want to reassure you that, you know, going rogue and forsaking the subscription in ESO is absolutely doable. It's just, you know, you're going to require a little bit more organization and things aren't going to be quite as convenient. And uh, as you probably appreciated from some of the ways that you're requiring all of this additional stuff, it can be quite an expensive little thing to do in in-game gold terms anyway. Um, you know, from the nearly million to max out your bag and bank slots, um, you know, buying things through the Discord crown exchanges is very expensive right now. It's been as high as 700 to 1 or even 750 to 1. Um, and, you know, it's been as low as 300 to 1, but that was before Blackwood. Um, so, you know, there's, there's lots of millions of gold that you would probably have to invest if you wanted to max everything out. Um, so it will be a bit of a journey. That said, and this is equally important, I don't want you to get downhearted if you are, you know, level one with no subscription going, oh my God, I do not have a million to spend on bags and bank space straight off. Um, you know, the base game is enormous. It's hundreds of hours of content. Um, of the dungeon pledges that you can do, you can do two of them out of the three. And the third one is usually a DLC, um, but you can do two of them. So you can still get all of your keys. You still have plenty of things to do. You can make plenty of money in the game. Um, you're going to be perfectly <laughs> well covered in terms of entertainment. And, you know, if you find a DLC that interests you, then you can just, you know, save up the money and then buy it through one of these exchanges. And it doesn't cost you a thing. Apart from time, maybe.
And, you know, while the gold amounts do look absurd, you know, um, you know, it actually isn't difficult to make lots of money um, on ESO. You know, all of the servers are pretty alive and thriving. Um, but, you know, if you were starting out, for example, I'll just give you some very, very quick hints and tips. Don't do any crafting. If you're starting out, you are just going to be hoovering up skill points like nobody's business. My main, my warden main, has more skill points in all of the crafting stuff than it does in the actual abilities that she uses. So, um, And of course, you know, if you have a lot of crafting mats, they're going to fill up your bank really, really quickly, which probably isn't a good idea either when you're starting out. Only loot things that are valuable. So we're talking about herbs, ores, leathers, runes, stuff like that. Stuff that will sell really quickly um, and for a decent amount of coin. Um, don't process them. Don't turn ore into ingots or, you know, leather scraps into actual leather pieces because you will lose value out of those things as a result of that. So obviously you'll need to join a guild with a guild trader, but um, there are plenty of them around. Um, because, you know, those raw materials will sell quickly and in large amounts. So, you know, if you just just quest, do your thing, explore Tamriel, enjoy yourself and pick stuff up along the way. If you really need to put skill points into the professions, just put one point into each of the keen eyes. Um, because that will just help things light up when they're, they're close to you. So, you know, some of the more obscure herbs are rather difficult to spot in the terrain, especially on high settings. Um, and that will help you find the herbs easier in particular. If you're into fishing, do you care for fishing? Well, if you do care for fishing, do do it. Um, you know, find a good documentary and um, get a bit of bait and get in there and start fishing. Um, the reason it's rather good is because when you are filleting the fish, um, you have a 1% chance to find a perfect row. Perfect Rolled is a gold quality uh, reagent for a number of high level recipes, which probably sells for between 25 and 30K at the moment each. Um, so, you know, if you are really into your fishing and you've got a few documentaries you like to listen to in the background, then, um, you know, fishing is another way to make some good money. And it's usually the way I start out. Anyway, I don't want to go more into that because that's veering into another video altogether. Um, but, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter what level you are in ESO. Um, you know, if you if you don't want the subscription, you don't have to have it. The game's totally playable. You can make plenty of money and you can just buy things as you go along. You'll be absolutely fine. Yes, you will be clearing out your bags more regularly than if you had the subscription, but you know, that's why it's a subscription. It's got to have some kind of bonuses, doesn't it? Anyway, I think that's enough prattling from me. I hope you found this video useful, or well, at least part of it anyway, and um, that you receive all the vegetables that you need today. I will return very soon, but until then, I am the Conspicuous Moo, and a very, very good evening to you.